welcome back to this channel we are glad to come back and then to have you here with us and uh, as we discuss the topic for today together we want to thank you all our retained subscribers Thank you for always being there and thank you even for our new subscribers. We thank you so much and for those who may watch this video who might not have subscribed to it, please do subscribe so that we can continue to move together and when you do subscribe it will be wise and good if you just take one second and then click the notification button. If you do, whenever we post a video, you will be able to see it because in that way, the YouTube will always give you notification. But if you just subscribe without hitting the notification button you may not actually see videos when we post except you will need to search for it and then uh, get it but if you subscribe and then click the notification button you will always get notification from the youtube thank you so much um remain blessed as we continue to look at these things together so this day i choose to talk about um a topic that i consider to be very important in today's world in our society um because what i am talking about today is what really cause someone or people to go into committing suicide so if there is a topic of that nature i think we need to address it and uh, address it so that um, we can see how it will help us and also help those that we love so I am talking today about uh, depression uh, and I consider that one to be a very serious topic. So um, let's discuss it together. I am not really an expert in it, but I have read some books about it and some articles about it and I decided to talk about it just so briefly today. In 20 minutes or more than 20 minutes but I don't think it will be for an hour so we will just spend some time as God will lead us to talk about um, this topic of uh, uh, depression so in this video I want to talk about um, five things that we need to take note of when we talk about uh, depression. So I will first of all um, look at us briefly um, or try to answer with us the question what is depression because we need to know and we need to be clear about what that is and secondly I will talk about um, uh, what are the causes of uh, depression? What really causes it? Or what are they? Because there may be so many of them. Um, then we will look at some of the symptoms. The things that when you see, it means somebody is going through depression. And we will also look at ways we can help someone to cope 
with depression. And then lastly, I will try to look at some biblical verses that will also help us to, um, to use when you are depressed or when someone is depressed, we can encourage them to look at those verses. So I am not preaching. I am not necessarily teaching, but I want to just discuss that topic and then uh, we see how it can help us. So if you will watch it and discover that it is of interest to you, please also share it so that someone can benefit from it. I know it is something that we cannot shy away from because it is um, a serious issue and in our contemporary world today we need many discussion on that and um, also in the future we will try to on this channel get some interviews on how um, people can manage it and get to bring some people that we can actually interview them so that they can talk about it maybe some expert those who are in the clinical department or those who deal with mental health and those who deal with things like that we will try to look at them and then um discuss it here in greater details so that we can really help our uh, people to know um, more about about it so with that let us move straight to um, our discussion and we will just start as I said with the what is actually depression so when we talk about depression what is that what are we talking about or what do you understand about uh, depression. I think uh, since it is a very serious issue, I will try to look many a times to my note that I have and then try to be careful to read so that it can be really of good help to us. I am not speaking from my memory. I have actually read, like I said, and I came up with something that I believe it will be of great help to us. So what is depression? By the way, have you even heard about that term before? Have you been depressed before? Sometime you may not even know. You might have passed through it and you don't recognize that it was depression because no one talked to you about it or maybe because you've never had discussion about it, or maybe your line of academic does not consider uh, that study at all. So we need to discuss and answer the question. But before I do that, I want to actually say it seems as if many young people are actually passing through depression today in schools, universities, and even secondary school, um, children and students are going through uh, depression. So if we can know this, and if they can also listen to some of this, because you can also discover if you are depressed when you know the symptoms and some of those signs that comes with it. So what is depression, by the way? Um, major depression, uh, depressive disorder, sometimes known as depression, is a frequent and significant medical condition that has an adverse impact in or on your feelings, thought, and behavior. Now, it is a medical condition. 
that is the first thing we note about the definition that I have just given. If it is a medical, a significant medical condition, it means there must be a remedy to it. That is what I need to say here from the start. Okay? There must be a remedy for it because there must be somebody that can be of good help in times when someone is uh, depressed. So it is that condition that actually uh, come to us and it affect our feelings, it affect our thought, and it affect our behavior. Now, it can also be associated with anxiety. Now, because anxiety too comes with worry, you worry a lot, you think a lot, you feel sad, you feel bad. So some of those things appear there. So it is a condition whereby somebody's thought, behavior, and feelings are affected. Affected negatively. Which means that you do not feel the way you used to feel freely. If you are a joyous somebody at depression state, you are not joyful again. So you either sad or you are, uh, maybe you just look depressed. So depression is something that comes and affects your life. It affects your life seriously. In a simple way, when it comes, you don't function normally again. But thankful that we have depression and depression is curable. It is not something that you can have and then die with it. It can be handled. And when it is a handle, a person must come back to his or her normal state. So we need to actually work on that. Sometimes it can be short-lived and sometimes it can take long. And then we need to know it as early as possible so that help can be sought and then remedy comes immediately so just know that when it comes it affects your entire being you don't think well you don't feel well and you actually don't behave well at that moment if this is what depression is then you realize that it is not a light issue it is a serious issue that need to be handled and that need to be considered and that need to even be a cause in our universities and schools so that it can help our young people in school not only that we still have adults who are passing through serious uh, depression. So what are the causes of depression? What are the things that when they come, they affect your feelings, they affect your thought, and they affect your behavior? That is what we want to talk about now. Depression can happen as a reaction to abuse. Now, when we talk of abuse, abuse can be maybe someone has been sexually abused, someone has been physically abused, someone has been emotionally abused. When someone is depressed, it may be that that person is reacting to the abuse that that person actually has passed 
through. If someone is abused sexually, it leaves the person as a state of depression where help is actually needed. Do you know that there are people who are being abused every day and they don't know how to come out of it? They are maybe warned not to say a word or they are threatened that if they mention it to anybody, they will be either terminated from their job or be sent to the street or many things, they will lose so many things. And because they are living at the messes of those people at that time, they are just dying within them. So they need help. It can also be as a result of violence. So depression can come as a uh, um, result of violence. It can be violence that has happened either to somebody in school or anywhere. It can lead to uh, depression. We have heard of domestic violence and we also know that there must be social violence. So when someone is violently are discriminated upon or act upon in a violent way, that person may respond in depression. So which means we need to make sure that we guide against violence, be it in school or make workplaces be favorable in such a way that people cannot be violently abuse okay and the third one could be that someone may be depressed because they might have lost someone very close to them you know when you lost someone very close to you um when you look at it carefully, sometimes those who pass through such a situation, some of them normally behave like they are not normal. Some behave like they are mad. And some may just behave, sometimes they just sit and focus at one direction like this. And, uh, and you just discover that they are not on their right senses because the death of someone who was very close to them has affected their feeling, has affected their behavior, and has affected their thought. So that can also be our point that cause depression. It may also be a family problems or domestic violence, like I mentioned, or maybe family breakdown. Here I've just mentioned family, family, but I also discovered that some can just be a breakdown from a relationship. Yeah, you know, when relationships are broken, if not properly handled, and if serious and careful preparation were not done, um, depression is bound to happen. So we need to be very careful. And so family issues that someone is constantly battling with can cause depression as well as domestic violence and also family broken down. Imagine a situation where you have built this relationship with this individual in marriage maybe for 20 years and just a day you are about to lose everything and that one sometimes really is not easy to handle so that too is uh some of the th those are some of the things too that causes uh depression also um depression might 
uh, come as a result of stress uh, that has happened for a long time in somebody. So uh, when you are so stressed up, it can lead to, to, to that. That is why sometimes relaxation is very, very important. Exercises are very, very important. Rest is very, very important. So we are saying that stress can also be one of the causes of depression. But sometimes you may be depressed and you don't even know what causes it. You don't even know why it has happened, how, and when it started. So sometimes it comes and it is just like maybe you are confused about it and you don't actually know. So those are some of the six things that when you see them, um, they normally lead in causing depression in uh, people. And now let us look at some of uh, the symptoms of depression. What if you see in somebody, you know that this person is really struggling with depression, or maybe you feel some of these things in your own life. You discover that things no longer work the same way they used to, and you see yourself experiencing some of the things that we will mention here. You know that uh, you need care. You need to be taken to somebody who will actually care for you. So what are some of the symptoms of that? Now, number one is that um, sometimes you just feel sad or you just have a depressed mood. You don't know what is happening. Nothing is good. Your mood is just bad. You feel so sad. And then just know that you are in the state of depression. You are experiencing depression at that moment. Now also, loss of interest or pleasure in activities that you once enjoy can be a sign of depression. Those are symptoms. Imagine that you just lost interest in things. Imagine that there were activities that you used to enjoy, but now you just feel like you don't need them. Uh, not like you've made, taken a decision that I don't want to do this because of this, but it is like you are just like someone who will always say, I just want to be me. I just want to be me. I don't need anybody. I don't, I mean, just like that. Those are some of the symptoms that you are depressed. And if you also notice some of this in the life of your children, just know that you need to talk with them on that and see how help can actually come. It can also be when you actually changes or changes in appetite and you also discover that you are losing weight. Now, let me say something here. There are people who intentionally work hard to lose weight. That is okay. But imagine a situation that you just discover that you are losing weight but you don't know what is happening. Maybe you go to the hospital, the doctors checked everything, but you are okay, but you just see yourself going. Those are symptoms of depression that you need to take serious care of. The next one is that you have problem sleeping. Or we can put it that you have sleepless 
night or you instead sleep too much you know sleep is okay but when you sleep too much or you don't even sleep at all then you need help you need help you are either depressed or you are about to enter into it seriously so that is another sign those are other signs of depression now another one is that um you just lost energy or increase in fatigue you lost energy you increase in fatigue those are also things that you need to actually care about feelings what you just i mean feeling worthless or guilty have you ever been in a state where you just feel like my life is nothing i am nothing i have no reason again my life is bad i am worthless i don't know which word to use again but take it from that point of view that you just feel like you are worthless you are nobody you understand and you just increase in fatigue those are the things that you need to take care of you need someone to talk to you on that and also uh difficulty in thinking you don't think straight right and then um you have difficulty concentrating you also have difficulty in making good decisions then something is wrong with you and one last thing here which is not the least i know there are so many is that when you have the thought of committing suicide no one need to tell you that just know that you are depressed if you can sit in the house and think of killing yourself you are depressed if you are the one at that moment look for somebody now all these causes i mean these symptoms you need to listen to them again and then hear them again so that you can weigh them on yourself and also try to look at your children carefully and husbands you look at your wife carefully and then wives you also check your husband carefully based on this because you may be living in a house or in a room with someone who is about to commit suicide and you don't know you understand so if someone is having that thought have you ever been with someone who tells you that i don't know i don't have any reason living again no one need to tell you again you don't need to go to school before you understand that that person is passing through depression that person need help at that particular time because he doesn't think straight he is feeling sad he is feeling worthless and he is having trouble thinking straight he is depressed and then he need help immediately so those are signs are uh, symptoms that we need to take note of we have listed only five for this video so that we can actually uh work on that symptoms must last at least two weeks and represent a change in your previous level of functioning for a diagnosis of depression so when it consistently happen for like two weeks or more then that is when now you need to check and you can be diagnosed seriously with a uh, depression so because there are people who can just be sad for a day and that is okay there are people who can just actually have problem thinking for a day that is okay but when it goes for so long it has come now for to a re, like two weeks or so it has come now to a level where you are sick yeah you are sick you need medical um uh, you need a specialist to look into your situation so 
we need to look at some of the ways we can help somebody. Now I'm talking about the ways we can help, which means in this video, we are actually looking at ourselves who are listening as people who are okay, who can actually help those who are depressed. Now, because we must be at a level that we can help someone who is depressed. We must not actually uh, send them all the time to the specialists because if we have the knowledge of it, we can be able to guide them. I will quickly run through this because we are fighting with time to hear. Number uh, one, how to help someone cope with it. Find out what is happening with the person. But there is something that you need to do here when you are finding out what is happening. Ask, what is happening to you? And when the person is explaining what is happening to you, please be careful and don't be judgmental. Now, what I mean here is that don't condemn them. Don't judge them. Listen to their story. Sympathize with them them and then feel with them and then be able to get into their shoe and listen well. One of the things that are lacking in today's world that actually cause people not to trust others to give them information about themselves is just simple. People sometimes listen very little and even trying to interrupt in many occasions. So as somebody who can help, you need to listen. And when you are listening, be careful not to judge them. Be careful not to stop them. Don't even say, I know what you are passing through because you don't know. You don't know. Except they tell you. So listen, let them tell you, let them explain to you, and then you will understand what is happening to them. The second thing is that invest time in them. Now, which means you need to actually ask what is happening. And for you to start that process, you need to make sure that you can put enough time in it. So try to build an environment of warmth. Also try to make sure that you give reassurance and then and support by taking them out for a walk when you discover that they have been indoors they have been sitting in one place they are like sad and whatsoever leave with them from a particular place where they have been and then take a walk with them you can go take a coffee you can go do swimming you can go actually take a drink somewhere or you take lunch somewhere just make sure you can invest time and i will also say some resources in it so that you can actually uh, uh, help in that. If you don't have time, then you don't need to even start it because you can worsen the situation. So you need to create time for them. If these are your children, make sure you spend enough time with them. Sometimes when our children come to us and then they say, please, daddy, please, mommy, this, this, you just say, no, 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 go, 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 I am busy. We don't need to do that. Listen to them. Listen to them. Because they may be passing through something that they just want to say it, maybe not so much clear, but when they can say it, you may actually try to get something out of it and then see how you can help them. So you need to be somebody who will create time and listen well okay now we move to encourage them uh to take good behavior now what do i mean here you understand sometimes when someone is depressed um uh, sometimes they don't behave well have you ever seen a situation where someone is blaming people for everything that is happening in their life now, they sometimes just behave poorly with people and that is as a result of that depression. So you need to encourage them, encourage your child and encourage that individual to always behave good, right? So 
that is a way that you can actually help them. So permit them to be expressive. Now, let them talk to you and then listen to them. Let them express their minds. Sometimes, those who are depressed, their expression may not always be what you will want to hear in a normal circumstances or circumstance. If that is the case, but you are trying to help a situation here, just permit them to express themselves well. Someone may be suffering and struggling with something that just need to talk to somebody. I've had people who say, I need to talk to someone now. I just need to talk to somebody. And I have had someone who say, hey, thank you for just listening to me. Thank you for just listening to my story. I have heard that. Someone said that to me. People have said that to me. Thank you. Oh, you! I thank God that you just listened to me. You are there to listen to my story. And then I feel good too at that particular moment. Do you know that listening can just help somebody to actually be relieved from that? Yes, that is true. And also keep them away from harsh environment. Now, remember I just mentioned before that you can take them for out for a walk. But if you discover that there is an environment that is so harsh to them, make sure you keep them out of that environment. Now, it may need some time that someone may be depressed in a relationship. They may need to have a break for some time for this other individual to be healed before they come back and continue with their relationship. Because in the process of working with this person, you are actually working with the relationship. So keep them away as far as possible from harsh environment. This is helping them to avoid situation where they may experience excessive stress. They may experience something like violence, they may actually experience a mood that will keep them in that state of depression. So they need to be free, they need to relax, and they need to change environment if they must cope well with that depression. So now, let's also look now, after discussing these few things, you know, we are not actually discussing them in details, but these are just some guide that will guide us. But let me say that if you are watching this video up to this level, it means that you are enjoying it. So please, if you have not subscribed to it, do so again, do so now, and then hit the notification button. For those who have been there already, we thank you again, and then we are blessed having you here. Now let's continue. Let's look now at some of the biblical um, passages that you can give them to use and some of the principles that we can derive from the Bible and then help someone or people who are going through depression. Those who are depressed must be able to, one, resist the feeling of depression. Now, when I talk out, uh, about resisting that feeling, what I mean here is that they should work hard on it. But the passage that I'm, I'm going to read now is 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, which says, be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil prowl around like a rolling lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Now, what do I want to pull out from here? The adversary here, who is coming like a rolling lion trying to look for someone to devour, can be depression. Okay? And also, depression can be like suffering, right? Now, Apostle Peter say, you should resist it and then stand firm and then know that what led to your depression is also things that are happening not only to you, 
but to other people in the world today. So how do you handle that? So you don't need to take it like it has only happened to me because you don't know what others are passing through. So at that time, if you understand a text like this, you use it to resist depression, sadness, frustration, stress, and then you stand firm and keep moving firm in your faith. So you need to make sure that people resist depression at all costs. The second thing that they need to do is that they should always practice the act of rejoicing every day. Now look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. The scripture says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it, rejoice. Now let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Now practice rejoicing. Now you see that Paul mentioned, uh, used the phrase, rejoice in the Lord. And he repeated it by saying, and I will say it again, rejoice. Now, what is he doing? He is laying emphasis on the fact that you are supposed to rejoice because being joyful is a step of solving the problem of anxiety. Because in verse 6, you will hear him say that, uh, is still in that verse, you will hear him say that, do not be anxious for anything. You hear that. Do not be anxious for anything. And he will continue by saying, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So you need to encourage those who are passing through depression to practice the act of rejoicing. Be joyful. Do you know that when joy is lacking in your life, you are gradually moving to a state of depression? Because if the opposite of rejoicing should be sadness, okay? And it leads to uh, depression. So encourage your children, encourage students, encourage co-workers, to be joyful. You too practice the act of being joyful. If you practice this, you will not experience depression at all. Rejoice in the Lord. And also, help them to believe in the powerful word of God. Now, do you know that the word of God has so many promises? The scripture even say the promises in the word of God are yes and amen. Okay? They are powerful and they have good plans that they put before us and we uh, see them. Even when you look at a text like Jeremiah, you see God saying, I know the plans I have for you and plans to prosper you. Now, when you read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the dividing of the soul and the spirit of joints and marrow and discerning the thought and intention of the heart. Do you know what the word of God can do? It determine and discern the thought of the heart. Something that is in the heart, the word of God discern. Okay, now but look at what it says. For the word of God is living and active. Okay? Now, if the word of God is living and active, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to encourage them to trust in the word of God. And when the word of God speak, they should believe it because it is alive and active in their lives. I am not doing exegesis of the text of scripture here. Also, help them to trust the fullness of God's presence. Okay? God is always there. Jesus said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And Jesus talking to his disciples, he said in Matthew uh, 28, 18 to 20, I will be with you always throughout the world, to the, the, age, to the end of the age. Okay? That is throughout the, our lives on earth here. So Jesus is always there. 
But listen to Psalm 16, verse 11. It says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So help them to trust in the presence of God. God is there. One thing that people don't know is that when they even have a thought that no one cares, they don't know that someone is just sitting beside them there. And that person is God is always there. And God has always been there and he has promised to always be there. If you look at God from this perspective, that he is not far from you, that is a big step of conquering stress and depression. Okay? It will help you if you actually practice these things. One, you practice um, the, to resist the feeling of depression. You practice the act of rejoicing. And you trust the fullness of God's presence. And then you believe in the power of the word of God. Brothers and sisters, friends, this will help you. I am not an expert in depression management. I am just a theologian. I am trying to look at it. If you look at it carefully, you realize that I was driving at something, trying to point people to the word of God. So I start from where people are depressed and then I end with how we can use the word of God to challenge depression with. Remain blessed. And continue to be with us. If someone might have forwarded this video so that you can reach the end. And now you are at the end and you have not subscribed because you missed what I said in the middle of the video here. So please, you still have the chance to subscribe. And not only that, please, please share. Encourage others and your friends to like and subscribe to this channel so that together we can help people in the community. I am also planning to talk about broken relationship, how we can bring it together, or how we can help people to heal from broken relationship. May God bless you. Thank you.